that uh mental health just bullshit you just you just push through it and uh yeah you just gotta w- work through it man I, in this generation of men today we're just taught to apologize for everything with the grovel on our knees uh why would she love me oh i'm so sad dude that's f- well is a scam i i think i guess i, I appreciate you coming on here but i mean holy shit man please well well what's your main problem with delving can you, into like, spirituality? Can you like just astral project to like a therapist's office I'm sorry, I think you should look into these things. I feel like you're missing out on a lot. I've looked into it, my friend, and oh my god. Your Google articles. Yeah. You're focused no, on not material. Google articles, you scientific think. literature that you can find on Google. Have you looked into spiritual teachings of a guru? Uh, no, I'll check out spiritual teachings of guru later on. Having meditated, uh, there's these things called chakras, and I felt such things when meditating and uh i've done copious uh psychedelic use and uh i believe i open what is called a third eye okay so meditating and doing psychedelics and believing you've opened a third eye what is any of your evidence for this how are you coming to the conclusion that this is in fact supernatural and not just something happening with psychedelics like for example we know that with psychedelics it rewires brain pathways so it can actually change your perspective in the way you th- that you think about things but we know that this happens via totally natural means this isn't some spiritual thing that's just how psychedelic mushrooms work um So you said we can talk about religion or the red pill or both. You mostly want to talk about Andrew Tate's ban, among other things. You're an avid Tate and fresh and fit viewer. Correct. Yikes. <laughs> I don't think too yet, but yeah. All right, well, where do you want um, to start? Do you want to talk about the Andrew Tate ban first? Yeah, we can get into that. Um, first, I want to know what's kind of your thoughts on it um, and what your thoughts are on deep platforming in general. Um, I think that there are definitely, I mean, I'm going to give like the most boring cliche answer in the world, but I mean, I think that there are times when deplatforming is okay. And I think that there are other times when it's not, um, what I'm particularly concerned about, like with what happened with Andrew Tate is the cross platform bans. I really don't like that uh, because that makes me a little bit worried for myself (laughs) because, you know, what's going to happen if I get banned from Twitch one day and then all of a sudden next I'm getting banned from Twitter and YouTube and everything at, at once just because one platform banned me. Um, that's a little bit concerning to me. That That's like my my least favorite thing about deplatforming. Um, but in regards to Andrew Tate, I mean, the kind of bullshit that that dude spewed was resulting in pretty real tangible harms on the world. Uh, and I think that it was probably justified to deplatform him in that case. I mean, we're talking about the dude that said women are property. So, I mean, yeah, he's not exactly like uh, a saint, if you will. That's that's generally hyperbolic, though. He he doesn't generally think they're property. He said um, that because it used to be want. that women used to be seen as property and that the hus- or the father gives them away at the aisle, that's still kind of like property. More or less, he's arguing for older gender roles. And to a degree, um, I find myself agreeing. Uh, okay, wait. Nowadays, Hold on, wait, wait, wait. It's wait, pretty wait. shit, man. Wait. Older gender roles have done yeah. very little except harm the world and harm the mental health and well-being of, of the citizens of this society. I mean, if you want to talk about men having it difficult right now, I would agree with you. But the reason that men have it's so difficult is in large part due to traditional gender roles. That's a, that's an interesting claim that gender roles have made men have harder lives. Would you like to expand on that? Yeah. So a lot of men have a hard time right now with their emotions and with expressing themselves. Um, and that is leading. That's a bit bullshit. That's a bit bullshit. Uh, mental health and all this shit. That's just, it's just fucking drama. It's just what the fucking left pushes. It's it has no credence in reality. You can literally just fight through these things. I mean, um, a fresh and fit. Myron always says that uh, mental health just bullshit. You just you just push through it, and uh, yeah, you just gotta w- work through it, man. I, 
in this generation of men today, we're just taught to apologize for everything. We have to grovel on our knees. Uh, why would she love me? Oh, I'm so sad. Dude, that's fucking bullshit. Mental health is a scam. Um, are you aware of Tom Cruise? Wait, I know the Tom Cruise thing and him saying that SSRIs don't work and all this bullshit. Okay, I'm, I'm aware. But let's take a step back here. First of all, Tom Cruise was talking about the medication to treat depression. He was never saying that depression or mental health was not a real thing. I mean, certainly you're aware that we can do brain scans and examine the physical changes to an individual's brain when they have certain mental uh, health conditions. Like certainly That's you- That's simply incorrect. Uh, you don't think that you can see depression in a brain real. scan? You can't see fucking anxiety, dude. Can't you can't go into someone's brain and see? Oh, that's anxiety. You can't do that. It's not real. Okay, so it's you're right that they aren't obvious in a brain scan, but brain imaging can show blood flowing to different areas, and if it comes to two areas at the same time, a sign of functional connectivity. So yes, you can actually see depression from a brain scan. Is that always indicative of depression, though? Brain scans alone cannot be used to diagnose a mental disorder such as autism anxiety, depression, schizophrenia. In some cases, a brain scan might be used to rule out other medical uh, illnesses such as a tumor that could cause symptoms similar to a mental disorder such as depression. Does depression still so have a brain MRI? So you can see that's not always accurate. It can just imply. Results of several MRI scan studies have demonstrated people with depression had a uh, hippocampus volume that was up to 10% lower than people without depression. So here's the thing, okay? You're right. This isn't 100% every single time. Sure. So... We now have evidence, physical evidence, that there are certain conditions within the brain that can cause depression and contribute to negative there. mental health. We have that. That is a medical and documented fact. And on top of that, we have millions of people who suffer from anxiety every day. So for you to get up here and say they're all just being dramatic, you realize that doesn't make sense, right? Like... I have depression, I have anxiety, I have OCD, okay? Do you think I'm just being dramatic? And maybe I was. Then do you think everybody else is just being, being dramatic? Do you think the millions upon millions of Americans that suffer from these mental ailments are all just being dramatic? You think it's a little coincidental all this mental health blah blah came up about when feminism started coming around? I feel like femininity has been introduced to men. And to feminism came around back in like the late... It. Are you talking about like the first wave feminism, like women should have the right to vote? Or are you talking about like third wave? Like nineteen hundreds, yeah, third wave, getting men to, you know, calm down, toxic masculinity. Did the Roman soldiers talk about anxiety? I don't think so. So what? We have a better understanding of how mental health works nowadays. We have a better understanding of the brain. Yeah, do you think Roman soldiers used to talk about cancer? Probably not. It wasn't that cancer didn't exist then. They just didn't have as good of an understanding of the human body. You were just taught to grow up strong like the Spartans did. I, I just don't see mental health as a thing. We can just disagree on that. So what? Wait, hold uh, on. Hold like on. Wait, 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 wait. Do you agree that men have a rough time right now in society? Yes or no? Yeah, I do. Do you agree that men kill themselves at higher rates? Of course. I know what you're getting at. Yeah, uh, so why? That's because of that. It's because... Well, you can fight through this. You just become a high value man. Wait, you know what I mean? and all those why are men disproportionately killing themselves? They're all just being dramatic. Or do you think that there's actually no mental illness here at play? I don't believe in mental illness. I believe in the condition, but I believe those conditions can be fought through. So depression, anxiety, you can fight through these things. It's just drama though. You know what I mean? And what you're asking for the cause. All right. I'll yeah. Why are cause. men killing themselves? It's, um, we feel undervalued. There's an, a, there's a war on men. Okay, hold on. Before we get into the war on men thing and the undervalued thing, because I agree that there's definitely a problem with, with men feeling undervalued. Okay, I agree with that. But y y you're being contradictory already because you're trying to say here that, oh, well, this is all just drama and they can fight through it, but you're simultaneously appealing to the fact that men have it worse off in society and kill themselves at higher rates. Why are men killing themselves at higher rates? Do you think that there's nothing in regards to mental health that has any contributing factor to suicide? Well, there's a war on men. It's a result of a war on men. And to escape that depression, to escape that anxiety, it's not permanent. 
You don't go on fucking medications, like Tom Cruise said. You fucking uh, you, you become a high value man. Okay, well I mean, that's great, but unfortunately, a lot yeah. of these men are in, a t in an attempt to become a high value ma man are climbing up to the highest skyscraper and then plummeting to their deaths because of it. So hold I want to know. On, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are, I want to know no, why you think this is. Man. Hey. Sh why do you think this is happening? Do you think that this, this is all just made up drama because of the war on men? You don't think there's any mental health that plays a role in regards to men disproportionately killing themselves? And what is the result of that? Or what caused these mental health afflictions to come up in men? such a mass scale why are these men killing themselves? Sure, so I can explain. I think the answer is obvious. It's a war on men to become a high value man to escape the this war, war there is if, if we're gonna go it. with your narrative that there's a war on men a lot of that yeah. war on men is perpetuated by other men and by traditional gender roles my dude so for example a traditional gender role for a man is that you need to be strong and stoic and in control and authoritative and dominant that is a very common traditional thing the problem with that is that when you tell a man and condition him growing up that in order to be a real man, a manly man, you can't express your emotions in a healthy way, that results in negative mental health, which results in suicide. It doesn't even have to result in suicide, which would be the worst outcome. We have a problem right now with men that are not making friends the way that they used to. A lot of the times women are able to, you know, call up a friend on the phone and they're able to talk for an hour and that that kind of works for women. But men are oftentimes or males, I really should say, are oftentimes wired differently and they do better when they are in groups with other males. But if you're not able to be vulnerable, even slightly, if you're not able to show emotion, even slightly, you're not going to be able to form a strong, healthy friendship or a strong, healthy bond, which is leading to less men having friends, higher rates of loneliness amongst men, and higher rates of suicide amongst men. This is all from traditional uh, gender roles. I think you're wrong. Okay, well, I know that you think I'm wrong, but you have to give an explanation as to why you think I'm wrong. I mean, you really want to trade off for what worked in the past for what's today? I mean... If you go on these dating apps like Tinder, there's a term called hypergamy. I learned it through Fresh and Fit. I know what hypergamy all is. These, yeah, all these women feel entitled to the top percentile of men. Okay. What about all the other guys, man? Do you see how like you, you sound like you're sort man. of they can't find a partner? They you can't find a partner. Wait, you sound like you're oozing right now with resentment towards women. And this is a big problem that I've noticed with a lot of these red pill types is that rather than addressing the actual problems at play, instead it's a lot easier and lazier to just blame it on the mean women who won't accept all the the sad lonely men. Something needs to change in a more broad uh aspect, okay? A lot of the times when I talk about the fact that men are uh, discouraged from showing emotion or crying or, or um, you know, expressing themselves in healthy ways. Um, oftentimes I'm told, well, women would just shit on the man if he did that. If that were the case, that is further evidence of my point because women are also taught that men, a masculine manly man, is a, a person who doesn't show emotion, who is stoic, who is in control all the time, who has authority, who's dominant. Now, those qualities, having authority, being dominant, are not necessarily bad in and of themselves. It's bad, though, when you say that this is the only way to be a real man, and if you do show emotion, which is literally healthy, then that makes you somehow less of a man. That makes you a beta. That makes you weak. That's the harmful element here. I agree with all that. I agree with your rhetoric that there are, there are issues in how women act. Not everything you're saying, but um, I agree that men should be strong and stoic, okay? But I also agree that women should know their place and worship the men, right? Are you trolling um, me right now? Are, wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 hold on, dude. Are you trolling me right now? I from a man and that, what? Are you trolling me right now? A what? You just said that you think women should worship the man. It sounds like you're trolling. Are you just trying to like waste my time here? Oh, no, no. I mean, like, in a lovingly way. 
Uh, okay, not, I just want to make sure I, I'm it's, fine having it's, this it's conversation. Just, I'm enjoying kind of this weird. conversation. It's just yeah, 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 I get yeah, very yeah, frustrated no when I have like a long debate and then it ends and the person's like, "LOL, I was trolling. <laughs> Haha, I wasted this time." Yeah, it's kind of annoying. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. Um, I feel like things would be better if women showed more love to men. Um, like this independent. What woman about thing. if men showed more love uh, to the themselves? Wop, wop. Hold on, I'm talking the WAP, the wet ass pussy movement. I, it's just. It's just not good, man. That's not a it's, movement. It's not good for women. That was a song that came guys. out like three years ago, and you guys are still mad about it. I know because it's it's perpetuating an attitude. It's not a that's not a movement, dude. There's no WAP movement, okay? <laughs> I, I think that when you say that like women need to show more love to men, um, I, I don't think that you're entirely wrong, but I also think that men could probably show more love to women. I think that everybody could probably work on being a little bit more empathetic and loving and understanding. But again, this shouldn't be something that only applies to women or just only applies to men. So like, do you recognize though that this idea that in order to be a good, strong, manly man, you must never show emotion, you must be stoic at all times. Do you recognize that that can lead to you? really, really negative outcomes, not only for the mental health of those men, but even for people around those men. Because men who subscribe to the traditional masculine roles that you're trying to perpetuate are also more likely to partake in violence against women. Okay. You can share those issues with, like, guy friends, just not with women. They're going to use it against you and call you pussy for showing your emotions. It's just fucked up. They don't understand us. We so, think differently. Our brains are hardwired this? Can we, like, walk through this? But if you have a nice group, hold on. If you have a nice group of guys you can just hang out with, with a beer with, talk with, a couple bros, you know what I mean? Frats, you know what I mean? Like, your, your tribe. If you talk with a couple bros about your emotions, I think that's fine. Okay, so we have two issues here. Is one, I don't know how why you think that if you're with the bros and you start showing emotion, they're all just going to be like a okay with it. When a lot of men, unfortunately, are raised believing the same things that you're trying to perpetuate, which is here's my my bro getting emotional. What a fucking bitch! You gotta get yourself together, dude. Stop crying. Stop being a girl. How many times have you heard this kind of shit? So I don't know why you think that like men would just naturally be like super loving and endearing. Um, of course, I would prefer it to be that way. But you've also forgotten an another problem is that a lot of men don't even have those bros that they can go get a beer with and talk to because they are so stoic. So you become a high value man. No, because cool. they are That's taught to be you stoic and not to you invest in crypto. You invest in NFTs. You go All strong. Right, you're trolling. You you're definitely trolling here. What's going on? I can I know you're trolling now, so okay. About what? About the fact that you're talking now about crypto. You said women should worship men. You're clearly just here to fucking troll. Stocks, investing, real estate. I mean. Are you just wait? I genuinely don't can't tell if you're you're a troll or not at this point. I I, I advocate for those things. I listen to Fresh and Fit. We have a crypto guest on, real estate guys on. Uh, it's really okay. Let's just wrap this up because I I don't want to waste any more time here because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end this and then you're going to go on a big tirade about how you wasted my time and trolled. Lol. So we don't have to talk about crypto. I mean, do you recognize the problem though that if men are taught to be stoic and to completely reject and even be disgusted at the expression of emotions or vulnerability, that that could hinder their ability to make friends with other men? Okay, I think this is a messaging problem. Uh, guys can be open about themselves. I just don't think you should be crying about it, being so emotional, groveling at the knees. You just got to get up and start working at it. That's my take. So do you also agree that... Okay, so l let me try to break this down even more so. I agree that if you are in a bad spot in life, that you should do virtually everything you can to better your situation. I agree with that, but this is where you completely crumble when you say something stupid like there's no such thing as depression or some shit. Because at the end of the day, there are people that are doing everything they can to better their lives and they are still unable to feel happy simply because their brain is not producing the proper amount of dopamine, simply because they are suffering from mental illness. So certainly you must recognize that even men who take your advice that you're giving right now and they've invested in every fucking crypto, okay, they're rich on Dogecoin, and yet they're unable to feel happy or accomplished or satisfied so with life. Crypto, man. But anyways, um, 
Do you recognize you know, that issue there? I, men I mentioned I was kind of spiritual. So if you really want to get into that depression thing, you're really just, can't. You're, you're just I like mean, running away from the, the subject the now. Well, what, what subject do you want me to press you on? No, I, I'm pressing you. Hunter, someone in chat is saying the same guy was trolling Vosh last night. Oh, okay. So you are a troll. Okay, cool. Thanks, dude. See ya. Okay. Yeah, he, he was just wasting my time. There was no way that he was even a serious person. So whatever. Many, many minutes later. Okay, this guy has come back and he's saying he is not a troll and that he genuinely wants to talk to me. So we're going to take his call. And then after that, we're moving on to the Biden subject, my friends. Thank you for the donos thus far, everybody. I will continue to keep my eyes open if anybody else wants to donate. Or remember, you can use exclamation mark merch. Put it in the chat and you can go and get some merch. So you've assured me you're not actually a troll? Not a troll. I just had, I just wanted someone to talk to about different things. And I thought it would be an interesting conversation. Okay, well, you said you wanted to talk about spirituality and you're a Catholic? I was culturally Catholic, but uh, I became atheist during my college years, then agnostic. And then I found myself weeping back into, I guess, spirituality. Uh, I don't really identify with those new age types, but I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot there that um, I think anti-religious, like atheist people tend to attack on. I feel like there's a lot that more meets the eye uh, when it comes to the supernatural to, to, to begin with. Uh, okay, before we so get how do you that, know if the supernatural exists? Um, having meditated, uh, there's these things called chakras and I felt such things when meditating and uh, I've done copious uh, psychedelic use and uh, I believe I open what is called a third eye and uh, this is a genuine thing you can look this up uh, it's borrowed from basically Hindu mm -hmm. uh, religion uh, the third eye is real uh, you can legitimately open that thing whether in deep meditation or inadvertently through a psychedelic and um Okay, so how do you know that this is actual spirituality and not just um, drugs? Well, you you can you can uh, experiment with these things off drugs. Yeah, that's the point. You can meditate. I have. Okay, so meditating and doing psychedelics and believing you've opened a third eye. What is any of your evidence for this? How are you coming to the conclusion that this is in fact supernatural and not just? something happening with psychedelics like for example we know that with psychedelics it rewires brain pathways so it can actually change your perspective in the way you th that you think about things but we know that this happens via totally natural means this isn't some spiritual thing that's just how psychedelic mushrooms work um regardless of psychedelics so you can do these things through meditating and i feel like there's a lot to be said about existence than there is just through just science uh it's a focus on the material and scientific papers but i think there's a lot to be said in other methods i don't know what this means what does that have to do with anything so yeah even if you're gonna say that that science isn't the only method there is no mechanism by which we can test for the supernatural so how is are you determining that it is actually, the supernatural is that inherently bad we you can experience these things through, like what I said, uh, meditating. Because uh, those experiences aren't necessarily use. supernatural, and you have no way of demonstrating that they are. So meditating, putting yourself in a state of, of calmness and, and focus, that's probably yeah. a nice feeling. Where's the evidence that that's spiritual? The third eye thing, uh, yeah, we already know that magic mushrooms open brain pathways, so it's quite possible that it would change how you think about things and your perspective on things. But again, that's a I'm natural thing. That. You can feel, you can feel these things when you do it, it's like a focal energy point within your body. Yeah, but you feeling stuff doesn't mean that it's supernatural. Like you just said that you did drugs. Like drugs make you feel all kinds of shit. I would know. I love drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Ah, just to pivot, you you don't find it strange how, I guess from your terms, science just, or Big Bang just created everything and we just came apart uh, through 
any supernatural means were just a I couldn't dream statistically of being a man half as good as you, Hunter. low possible chance of happening that we became this and that. You really think everything around us is just science? You really think we just we we just got made up from chemicals and chemistry? You think? I don't think the think Big Bang those? created everything. Um, I think the Big Bang introduced our current universe. But yeah, yeah. no, something had to have existed before to even initiate the Big Bang. So I don't know what was before then. Um, and also, agnostic? it's not. Hmm? Are you agnostic or do you find yourself atheist? Or I'm an, I'm agnostic atheist. So I am not yeah. convinced that a god exists. I don't take a positive claim that there is no god. I just simply say that I don't find the belief in god uh, reasonable. So. Yeah. Like, you Sorry. say that, like, it's really unlikely that this would happen. It's not, actually. When the Big Bang happened and and um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of different galaxies came into existence, it's not actually that hard to believe that one specific planet was just the right distance away from the sun that had the right uh, type of gravity oh, no, no, and the no, no, right no. type of chemicals uh, to facilitate evolution. No, I, I agree with you. I, I meant, like... like um us happening like uh, life being created is pretty uh, pretty rare in the universe um it's like a fermi paradox i kind of looked into this stuff but yeah uh like us coming about is like pretty pretty rare in the universe you know what i mean um what do you mean us coming about oh like uh like the whole well, through a scientific explanation like us be like as you said being the right distance from the sun our planet that's not that unbelievable that. at all you know they've done studies, right? Where they they've, I'm trying to find it exactly here in my notes. I'm yeah. going to see if I can find it. But basically, you know that they have done studies or or experiments, more likely, where they've taken uh, computers, right, that have algorithms, yeah. and they have laid out certain letters. So they'll say like A B C F Y or whatever, right, and l lay out like certain amount of letters, and then that computer algorithm will randomly generate letters and numbers and mm. it only took less than 24 hours for the computer to randomly generate the exact same pattern that was originally set up by the humans and this by the way was in the 1980s imagine how much more advanced and complex algorithms are now it's not actually that unfathomable it's really not i wasn't initially arguing with you that we're like like that were super rare I, I was actually agreeing with you that like wow it's pretty crazy how we came about you know what i mean yeah it is pretty crazy i'm just really just, and i'm glad it happened i just wish that there is more research into i don't know the consciousness i feel like there's a lot out there that we don't understand and i know i brought up drug use and meditation you you're inclined to not believe me i feel like there's really there's really something uh beautiful mm -hmm. to how we came about and like how we interact with each other how what does how any of this art. have to do with god or spirituality or or anything well i'm, I'm getting to that i i don't know it it just feels depressing that we just came about from fucking science and why i don't know I, why is that just depressing like First of all, you said depression isn't real, so you need to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and get over it. But second of all, even if it were a feeling. Yeah. even if it were depressing, like who cares if if you're given undeniable evidence that we came from chemicals and evolved and all this shit, so yeah, it doesn't take away anything with our current experience, with the people you know and love, with your appreciation for beauty or music or or media. None of this yeah, is all changing. Those that, all those things that came about it's just these complex emotions every human has it's just so weird that that would be the result of like science and not something inwardly like our spirit i mean there's no evidence of a spirit or of a soul but yeah just if we don't Maybe know these are meant for us to find what because if you're so big focused on a materialist uh perspective inclined to believe that oh if i can't find research on this it's wrong no, what you're is, doing is the opposite. You're saying if you can't find research or an explanation, it must be God or some spiritual thing. Not saying God. Uh, I am saying something spiritually, yeah. Yeah, um, which is wrong. That's We don't 
we don't just go about and, and cram God in when we don't have a different explanation. You brought up consciousness a minute ago. You know, for a while, people had the exact same question only about life itself. How can we all be made up of matter and atoms and yet have life and the ability to move and, and act out supposed desires? And for a long time, people said it was God. Now we have an evolutionary explanation for that. And now they've just moved on to consciousness. How do we have consciousness? How does this make sense? Oh, it must be God. Well, in only a matter of time, we'll find a natural explanation as we always have. And it once again will prove that God or spiritual spirituality was not actually necessary at all. If spirituality happened to be, okay, how, how about this? If science proved that the soul is real, would your perspective change on this? Uh, yeah, but science has proved the exact opposite. In what way? Evidence of proof is on you. I presented it. There's chakras when you meditate. You haven't given uh, any proof. You've given personal experiences from stuff that happened when you did drugs, okay? As far as yeah. proof of the soul or lack thereof, we know that yeah. virtually everything that happens to us is in our brain. This is why people will bring up studies that have shown that if um, you split someone's brain, that they will literally be a different person. So where is the soul? If there's the soul that holds like this, this grand weight and who we are in our consciousness, why then are you able to literally do experiments where people have had their brains cut in half. Now, of course, this would have been probably for some medical reason or another. I'm not actually sure the, all the details, but their brains were split in half. And it was as if they were now two people in one body. Even more so, one person was a Christian. The other half of the brain was an atheist. Where's the soul? Everything that we know about humans and how we act and how we feel and emotions and whatnot we have an explanation, and it's in the brain. You think it's all chemistry, but I think it's deeper than that. What, what evolution, what evolutionary change would have brought up fucking emotion and empathy? Excuse me, could you say that again? Who, like, you, you argue for evolutionary processes. I agree with evolution, but um, well, what? What evolutionary change would have had to occur to give us fucking empathy, emotional connection with each other? And, yeah. That's just standard shit. We're social creatures. We've ex we've evolved in order to thrive and flourish as a species. And having empathy is one of the things that allows us to do just yeah. that. Having Don't empathy allows me to know that uh, okay, I don't want to get punched in the face. I don't need to be punched in the face to know that it hurts. And so if I see somebody else getting punched in the face, I feel empathy for them. I feel bad. Ooh, that sucks because I know that it would hurt if I got punched in the face. This Why is a standard evolutionary about? thing. Why did these feelings come about? For our survival. Why couldn't we just be a, you know, like an insect, no emotion, just a hive mind collecting honey. Because we wouldn't survive that way. There's a reason why humans have evolved to be superior to all other forms of nature. So you argue just having empathy for the, the lost dog on the street or the kid on the corner trying to beg for change. You think this is all just brain chemistry? You don't think it there's something yes. deeper into us, like in Wait, our emotions? Wait, literally, that, you know, yes. There are people are called psychopaths or sociopaths where they have something wrong with their brain... And they are unable to feel empathy. I think those are the people of the result of dark energies being introduced into their uh, surroundings. Uh, we don't have to get into dark that. Dark energies. Want. Okay, I'm going to go with the medical explanation, and you can go with the, like, Lord of the Rings explanation. You don't believe in demons? No, I don't. Well, again, it's kind of the same thing, is, is I'm not convinced that there exists any spiritual realm or anything. Okay. Well, why do people on DMT see the same thing? I don't know. Do you think that people who are... Do you think that there's such a thing as alien abduction? Could be. I don't know. Uh, on DMT, people reported seeing the same exact thing. Here's my explanation. Wait, okay. Mate, like I, I, I don't know how to check this out. I would I would be very curious to see right. if you have an Look article or a research paper about this. Knows. 
a machine of I think Joe Ro- Joe Rogan's talked about it quite a bit. Okay, well before we go on that, I'd like to read you this really quickly. Yeah. People have long pondered okay. what consciousness actually is. Consciousness seems very different from other biological functions. People used to think of life itself that way too, and many still do. But biologists solved the enigma of what makes things alive midway through the 20th century. The foundations of that understanding having been built over the preceding century. Before that, living things were believed to possess some sort of animating essence like a soul, hmm, that accounted for their difference from inanimate matter. People cannot imagine how the same material particles that compromise inanimate matter could be arranged in such a way as to make something alive without adding that special, mysterious, non-material essence. And now in the present century, science is turning its attention to decoding the enigma of consciousness. It's applying the same kind of systematic step-by-step methodology to deconstruct what at first glance has the appearance of an insurmountable mystery. Yeah, and it's going to lead us to an esoteric age. We're going to we're going to pivot towards spirituality. There's evidence already. We're not. We're pivoting away from it. The more scientific discoveries, the more scientific discoveries made, the less need there is for a god. These are things you can do, Hunter. You can astrally project. Okay. That up. I know what astral astral projection projection. is, my dude. I I know. What is your scientific explanation for such a thing like that? Um, I don't know if that's even real. I would not be involved in the occult, man, if this thing didn't have too much stock in it. Pretty fucking strange, don't you? I think there's a lot that more than meets the eye when it comes to spirituality. Oh, what do you know? I searched it. I searched astral projection debunked. You know what the top oh, thing is? Oh, for the bunk shit. I mean, obviously you're going to get that result. No, this is actually from a medical website explaining the different brain pathways that allow for this. Out-of-body experiences Bad are visual hallucinatory nature. visual experiences that involve seeing the physical body placed in an external visual space. Many psychiatric disorders, brain dysfunctions, pharma, uh, pharmacological agents, and altered psychological states are reportedly associated with these phenomena. They have been linked to various brain lesions, particularly in the, um, how do you even say that word? Parnatal and temporal regions, psychiatric disorders, severe emotional states like a near-death experience, substance use, migraine, and epilepsy, but very few have been reported in disassociative identity disorder. In this report, we present the case of a 15-year-old male patient who described a strange experience where he found himself to be floating outside of his own body. On further evaluation, a diagnosis of disassociated identity disorder and disassociative, uh, figule? (laughs) I don't even know what that word is, was formulated. The patient showed improvement after undergoing hypnosis and relaxation training along with supportive psychotherapy. So this is what I mean. It's like every time there is something that is, that is, um presented as look at this strange spiritual thing there must be a soul look it just goes back to having an explanation within the brain why would why would astral projection go away when the person is being treated for certain medical conditions hunter listen do you have any proof or a sound argument right that we don't have a soul that can be separate from our body just for a moment like an astral projection do you think it can be proven and why do you exactly think that you know what i mean I mean, there's a. I've there's already many proven it uh, this whole time. You've been presenting me with hinting that people might have a soul. No, this whole time you've been presenting me with supposed experiences that suggest a soul, and then we look into it more, and it actually has a very reasonable and valid medical explanation, which is what I keep because saying: is that there is no soul; it's all in the brain. I feel like you just want to ignore these things instead of addressing it. No, you want I mean, to ignore the actual evidence that we have. Why is it that this individual here in this in this case study stopped having supposed astral projection after being treated? Is he 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 got woken up for it, man? I don't does know. medication don't affect know, the astral soul? Projection is real, man. I've done it. Does does medication affect the soul? I mean, yeah, it affects your brain chemistry. That's a part of our biology. I'm not ignoring biology when I talk about the spirit. You are, though, because you're trying to say there's something aside from the brain, but everything you've given me thus far has an explanation within the brain. Okay, explain chakras then. I don't know what that is. Look it up. You'd be quite surprised. What is it? Chakras or third eye. Just type whatever. Oh, look, the top result is chakras debunked. (laughs) Is it the seven chakras? 
Yeah, spiritual awakening, how to open your third eye. For Some spiritual, spiritual views hold that our body is more than just physical and mental. Okay. Uh, it means like, wheel or cycle. Like there are seven main chakras situated along the spine, from the base of your spine to the crown of your head. This age-old belief has become integrated into many new age styles of thoughts. Yes. Okay. Do you have any crystals? Do I have any what? Crystals? No. Oh, no. But yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? What, about, what do you think about chakras? Um, I... I don't know what I'm supposed to think. It sounds like they're re referencing certain uh, uh, things on our spine. These are tangible things you can interact with under you meditate. Okay. Would you try it out? Like when on your free time? Like I'm trying to prove to you that there's more to life than what meets the eye when it comes to spirituality. Okay, let's see. The scientific basis of integrative medicine? Even better, how to open your third eye. That'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Right, hold on. Uh, according to the tradition of yoga and many new age practices, the chakras are vital centers of energy that exist in all of us. While they're not visible to the human eye, they're thought to be essential to our ongoing development. Oh, okay. So we're back to the, you can't see it, but it's just there. Cause trust me, bro. I think of them as an invisible energy organs. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> are you meant to see everything? Maybe... Maybe no, but if it can't be detected in any re in, in any meaningful way, then it's as if they don't exist. I feel like so they're, they're saying they use a connection to the endocrine system. The chakra system has yeah. been linked to the endocrine system with certain glands correlated to certain chakras. For example, the root chakra mm -hmm. correlates with the testes or ovaries. Third eye, pineal gland. These things are our spiritual focal points, man, that you can interact with and you meditate. You can Wait, feel these but energies. But you're literally explaining right now a natural explanation that doesn't involve a spirit or spirituality. This is biological. This is a biological explanation again. Yeah, and it projects it. There's proof that we are a spiritual people, man. We have a soul. No, this is the opposite. This is evidence no, that it connects to a biological it. function, my dude. Now you see a gland and you're like, oh, it's biology. Oh, yeah, duh. But what do you think it's used for, man? Yeah, science will tell you something. But once you interact with these things, experience something totally else. I feel like th there's been a war on spirituality, man. It's not a war on anything. It's a war on unjustified belief and, and loonies. These, but these beliefs are justified, way more justified than you find on the corner at the church saying that he read a book and that he knows God is real. That's not that's not proof. This is proof, Hunter. You can, you can meditate and interact with your chakras. This is a real thing. You can astrally project. These are real things. I'm not. I'm not telling you're you. You're just read telling a book, me dude. stuff. You're just like they're real, bro. Trust me, bro. Well, you haven't interacted with it. Of course, you're gonna find a scientific article debunking it all. But have you ever experienced it? No. Nor do I need to. I think that's your problem. And I think when scientists research into the supernatural and the consciousness, they'll they'll be quite surprised, man. I'm looking and I like how you ignored my other point about people on DMT seeing the same thing. My dude, I've been trying to look up everything you're telling me to. So hold on, wait, let's just make this clear. We've looked up the astral projection thing and turns out yeah. it had something to do with the brain that then would go away with medication. So I don't know where the soul is involved there. You then bring up the chakras, which somebody has said now, or at least the site I just read, said that it actually could be linked to the endocrine system, which is a biological explanation, yeah. not a yeah. spiritual one. So I've well, already dis I've already disproven, or at the very least, poked enough no, 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 holes no, no. through everything you're saying that uh, that cast no yes that cast very legitimate doubt no. on the claims that you're making now i will Those look up the, the dmt thing but i just want to be hold on i just want to make sure that we are summarizing uh, uh correctly that so far the astral projection and the chakras thing both yeah. have natural explanations there is no spirituality at play yeah. no 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 they're natural explanations for the soul man once you Get into it, interact with it. You feel something totally else, man. Do you think do you think MIT researchers are meditating in the corner on DMT trying to figure out where their soul is, man? No, they're not, because they don't experience it. They're in a lab looking at the organ. Brainwave study explains why a DMT trip is like entering an alternative reality. Yep, yep, yep. Now scientists Brilliant. might finally know why the chemical substance can push people into seemingly new cognitive dimensions. Yep. Okay. 
These changes in our brain activity may help us create an extremely realistic new reality that exists entirely inside the mind. We found wow. neural signatures related to states of consciousness in which people feel completely immersed in simulated alternate realities. People are engaged in these alternate dimensions, which feel incredibly real and meaningful. They feel they engage with beings and entities that communicate with them, and they have strong emotional reactions and effects in their bodies. Hunter, they're real. Wait. <laughs> You keep saying, look this up, bro, look this up. And every time I do, there's a natural explanation that doesn't involve anything spiritual. Once you delve into them, you'll feel it, man. There's a natural explanation for it because it's real. It's up to you to delve into it. Of course, the scientific community is going to address that fucking, uh, you're going to see a gnome in your dream if you take this drug, man. Of course they're not. Wait, well, it's real, they man. literally it's real. gave 20 people, or I'm sorry, 13 adults a DMT dose. They tripped for 13 minutes or excuse me, 20 yeah. minutes. Okay, and then they said, while they were experiencing, scientists took EEG readings of their brain activity. Ultimately, the team was able to boil down the DMT experience into interactions between four different types of brain waves that usually seen during state of consciousness. Delta waves, the lowest frequency wave common during sleep. Mm -hmm. Theta, yeah. theta waves found during earlier sleep stages. Alpha waves found during relaxed states like meditation. Beta waves common during typical wakefulness. They explained that generally speaking, the team saw large decreases in higher frequency alpha waves and big increases in the low frequency delta yep. waves while their yep. participants were on DMT. These effects were strongly related to the visual imagery or hallucinations induced by the compound. So I'm right. These effects are similar to what we see when people are dreaming. Wait, how mm -hmm. are you listening to what I'm saying and saying that you're right? Are, are you not listening at all? There's proof within the brain that these waves are results of the soul. Okay. Of our chakras. Okay. Our energy. You're like the best example right here as to why you should not do drugs. I'm not doing drugs. I meditate. Apparently you've done some, some wacky drugs too, man. Oof. Andrew Tate, one hell of a drug. As well. No, you've proven nothing, my dude. I unironically just read you the study that demonstrated certain brain waves that contribute to the DMT yeah. trips, and you're trying to say, yeah, maybe there's a scientific explanation, but behind all of that, there's actually a secret spiritual explanation also. Yeah, because those waves... You're, you're are doing like God control. of the gaps, except spiritual spirituality Wait. of the gaps. Okay, okay, you're obfuscating, okay? I am not. You, you unironically just said that I proved you correct when you didn't even fucking listen yes, to what I just said. actually. I told you there's glands within the body and they're projecting the focal points of our energy, the chakra. You're right? making that part I'm up. Not, I'm not saying biological organs can't be related to our soul. Obviously, right. So you're and doing the God of the Gaps thing. Research yeah, you found that was yeah right. exactly. We have Please. the natural explanation, but we have to still sprinkle the spirituality on top of it. That's what you're doing right now. Yeah, it's true. No, it's not. You have not demonstrated it, nor can you. Why do people see machinos, man? Why do they all see the same thing? We're entering another dimension, bro. Do you think when we dream, where do you think we're at? Where do you think we're at? You don't think we're somewhere Wait, else? you think that when you dream, you're in a different dimension? It's related to astrally projecting, yes. I'm about to enter a different dimension right here with how fucking stupid you're being. No, it's not, it, it's not stupid. Well, why it is stupid as shit, my dude. Yeah, it is. And this is why people think you're a troll, is because we don't want to believe that somebody as dumb as you exists. It's not dumb. You haven't experienced the supernatural. I don't need to experience it to know okay, that it's fucking bullshit. All right, let's tone down the conversation. All right, one point at a time. I think we're getting off the wrong foot here. Yeah, okay. I think that we're going to be ending this soon because I'm about to astral project out of a fucking window. <laughs> but, okay, okay do, you, do you obviously disagree with everything I'm saying, right? Yes, and I've demonstrated that my position is far oh. more believable. I feel like those p research you provided just supports what I'm saying, to be honest with you. No, um, you're reading the, you're listening to me read you the scientific explanation and the biological yeah. explanation, and you're saying, oh, well, that's just because of the spirituality. I, I think it is. But you have no evidence of it. This is why I say it's annoying, is because it's unjustified belief. Well, I don't think I'm able to convince you about spirituality. But I You're do not. Want to There's no way to do it because it's unfalsifiable. Well, it's unjustified. Hunter, if you go on a journey of the spirit, you'll the find that there's more than meets the eye. I mean, you remember the Library of Alexandria? Remember, imagine how much esoteric writings and practices were erased when that the game library got destroyed. Okay.
That's great, dude. Like, like the pyramids. You really think humans built that? All right. I appreciate your time. I still don't. I still am kind of like on the fence here. I feel like you're probably a troll, uh, but uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. you're in a whole ass new other dimension right now, dude. I'm. I am a spiritual thinker, and I just wanted to see. You're just a delusional sp speaker. Wrong. You're a delusional okay. thinker. That's, I don't think that's a correct characterization. Okay. I do want to discuss, though. I do want to discuss. Uh, uh, who was that caller you were on before me, Vivian? I was talking to Vivian, and we're not getting into that subject with you. So, okay. Uh, no, I, I would agree with you on that subject. Okay. Well, I, I think I guess I, I appreciate I you, you coming on here, but that. I mean, holy shit, man. Please. Well, well what's your main problem with delving into like, spirituality? Can you, You're like, just astral project to, like, a therapist's office? Hunter, I think you should look into these things. I feel like you're missing out on a lot. I've looked into it, my friend, and oh, my God. Google articles... Yeah. You're focused no, on not material. Google articles, yeah. scientific literature that you can find on Google. Have you looked into spiritual teachings of a guru? Uh, no, I'll check out spiritual teachings of guru later on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me send you some sources. Do you know sad guru? No, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need any of your quote unquote sources. Okay. Um, all right. well, just, you, you, you can ship me like a crystal or something. Okay. But all right. Thanks. Thanks anyway, man. dude. See ya. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was annoying. <laughs> what the fuck? Hunter has obviously never done psychedelics. Yeah, nor do I need to, to know that it's bullshit and it's not actually spirituality, my friend. Cope? 